Hey folks, welcome in this new video. Today we will learn how to create effective videos using only React. I know, creating videos with React can seem to be weird, right? The first time you heard it. In fact, my first reaction was like, what? Is this a thing? Can I, can I really create a video with React? But stay with me for a few minutes because today we will effectively learn how to create videos programmatically using React, so you can just reuse all your knowledge of HTML, CSS, and pure JavaScript. Let's start from the ground. What is a video? We can see a video like a sequence uh, of images, right? You can have 30 images per second, 60 images per second. It really depends on what you are building. Other than images in sequence, you also have usually an audio, so you have one or multiple audio tracks. But if you think about it, we can already create a sequence of images using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with our, with our React knowledge. We can just, I don't know, make a screenshot of the viewport. And what happens if we make different screenshots of the viewport while something is happening inside the viewport? Yeah, exactly. We are creating a sequence of images and we are actually creating what can be defined a video. Then what we need to do later is just to stitch all those images together, and we will see it in a few seconds how it's done. Now, how editing tools works? Well, usually if you're familiar with tools like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut, you will see that you have tons of options. You can create really complex audio and video effects, but this is not what we will do today. We will do something way, way simpler. Introducing Remotion. Remotion is a React library to make videos programmatically. Once you download Remotion, you will have access to a lot of really cool stuff. So starting from the Remotion library itself, which expose uh, a lot of primitives to create videos, you will have then the Remotion player, uh, then you will have Remotion Lambda, Remotion Studio, a lot of things, and we will cover some of them in this video. But how does it work under the hoods? Well, first of all, we have React, so we will create some React code, really simple React code. Then this React code gets rendered into Puppeteer. So we will use Puppeteer to take actual screenshots of the viewport. And then all those screenshots and same applies for the audio, they are uh, bundled together using FFmpeg. And we have our final video. Now let's talk about some potential use cases. Uh, one potential use case can be parameterized videos. Well, since we are using React under the hoods, we can just pass different props and this will uh, give us different videos in output. Uh, then we can have automated video workflows, or even if you want to make a business on top of it, you can create a cloud-based video SaaS or video products in general. Now let's see an example. I hope everyone here is familiar with uh, SpongeBob. So I created a tiny example using SpongeBob. As you can see here, we have a video with some confetti. Then we have the image of SpongeBob, then we have uh, the image Happy Birthday SpongeBob, then we have a slideshow with a few photos. Everything, as you can see, is animated. And then uh, we have another text popping out. And uh, at the end of this video, we have a fade out effect. You cannot hear it, but there is also a Happy Birthday song. And actually, this is the source code of what we just saw. As you can see, it is a JavaScript object which just contains a couple of info like settings, the format of the project, so uh, the number of frames per second, so images per second that needs to be generated. Then we have a timeline. Uh, then inside each timeline, we have uh, three types of tracks. We have the video tracks, the audio tracks, and subtitles tracks. As you can see, this is an array. This means that we can have multiple video tracks. Each track has its own ID, its own index, and a lot of assets that we can create. But no worries, I know that this code can seem a little bit weird, but we will take a look at it in detail. Is this a perfect solution for all the use cases? Definitely not. Remotion is a really cool technology, but as all the technologies, there are a lot of problems and the developers are working really hard and really smart to solve them. But that being said, it is quickly evolving and is definitely production ready. Let's see one possible use of Remotion. Of course, this is just my personal preference. You don't have to use this pattern. You can just create Remotion components and then render using Remotion. But let's say that you want to build something slightly more complex. 
So first of all, we will have an editing tool. It can be uh, a CLI, it can be an editing tool, a visual editing tool, it can be everything. The important thing is that it generates a JavaScript video description. This video description goes inside our render engine. This render engine is built on top of Freemotion, or you can just use the Remotion primitives and in the output, we generate an MP4 video. Let's build a really, really simple render engine using Remotion. All right, it's coding time. So if you want to follow me, just uh, make a clone of the repository that you are now seeing in slides, or you can find also the link in the description below. We are here on the Remotion homepage. And as you can see, the first thing you have to do, which is quite simple, is just to run npm init video on your terminal. This will generate a Remotion project. And from here, you can start it with npm start. When you run npm start, Remotion Studio will start automatically. And here we are inside Remotion Studio. In Remotion Studio, you will see a list of all the compositions. You will have the assets. Here in the middle of the screen, you will have the actual preview of what your video is showing us. Then you will have the props and we will see it in a while. Then you have the list of all your renders. And here in the bottom, you have the timeline. As you can see, you can zoom in and zoom out. You can play it and you can do a lot of stuff here. Remotion Studio is such an useful tool to take a look at the preview of your video of what you're building. So use it as much as you can. It's a really useful tool and the developers of Remotion made a really good job on it. Now, as you can see here, we are seeing a live preview. We can see a preview frame by frame and it works really well. Once we are happy with the result, once we are happy with the components that we created, with the animations that we created, we just go in the render section here. We can change a lot of options here, uh, starting from the frame range, the output name. We have a lot of input props. We can change uh, the JPEG quality. We can change uh, a lot of things also regarding the audio. Once we are happy with the final result, we just click on the render video button and the new rendering will start. As you may guess, since we can start the rendering from, uh, I don't know, an API call, uh, a CLI command, a GitHub action, the possibilities are endless. We can literally automate our videos through Remotion. Now let's take a look inside the actual code of this tiny render engine that we built. Of course, this render engine is just a demo version, is not supposed to be used on production, but can be maybe a good starting point to build your own render engine if you want. Here we are on the VS Code project. So we start from the root.tsx. As you can see here, we have just one composition, which is the main composition, which is shown here in Remotion. Of course, this is the ID. And then we have a few important props, like the component that we will see in a bit, the duration in frames, the FPS, which stands for frames per second, the width, the height, the schema, and we will see it also in a second, and the default props. Let's get started from the schema. In this case, we decide the schema that we want for our props. I just tried to recreate a classic timeline schema. As you may guess, inside the timeline, we have multiple tracks. So we have video tracks, audio tracks, and subtitles tracks. Subtitles for now is not implemented, but if you would like to contribute to this tiny project, please feel free to open APR into this repository. Then inside the audio schema, we have just an ID of the track, the index of the track, and an array of assets. Each audio asset has its own source. So we can add here, for example, uh, URLs. Then we have a start at frame. This means that I want to start, for example, the audio from, I don't know, two seconds. In that case, we just need to say, hey, I want to start from two per FPS, so the number of uh, frames that we have per second. And this, in this case, will say, hey, uh, start from, I don't know, uh, frame 60. It really depends on your FPS, right? Then we have the duration in frames, so how much time the audio is going to take. Then start from and the volume. So the volume is just uh, an integer from 0 to 1. And start from is an optional param, which say, hey, start the audio asset from, I don't know, the second five of the song, because maybe uh, when the song starts, there is a quiet time in the first seconds and we want to skip that. 
Same applies also for the video. We can have this uh, also for the video to start from. Then back to the video track, we can have assets. In this case, it is slightly more complex because, uh, for example, in DaVinci Resolve or other tools, other professional tools, in the video track, you can create videos, you can add text, images, and a lot of other stuff. So that's exactly what I did. So we can have the video asset, we can have image asset, text, and also CSS asset which is just a div containing plain CSS. One of the interesting things about Freemotion is that we can usually literally all our CSS knowledge. We can create complex and dynamic layouts for our videos. We can literally do everything we want. So once we decided our schema, we can uh, create an example. In this case, I created the birthday video example, which contains the SpongeBob video. And as you can see here, we have the main video, then we have uh, a second video track with the Spongebob photo, with a source, duration in frame, a start frame, and then the style. So this is plain CSS. As you can see here, we also have dynamic style. So this is the animation. I just created a custom hook to decode this dynamic style into interpolation of free motion that, and we will see it in a few minutes. Then we have uh, the bird, the happy birthday text with his own animation. And then we have the slideshow with all the images. And then we have the other text. And at the end, we have the CSS with the fade out animation. And that's essentially it. You can create videos as complex as you want. Now, back on the root file, let's take a look at the component file. Here we have our entry point, which takes the render description for example, the birthday video render description, and we have a sequence. A sequence is a remotion primitive. Uh, you can see it like a container. So as you can see here on Remotion Studio, everything is inside this sequence, which is the main timeline. Now here I'm looping through all the video tracks and all the audio tracks. Inside the audio tracks, I am just creating a new sequence with the track ID. And then here I'm creating a sequence with a from and a duration in frames. Then here we have an audio component from the motion. Same applies for video and images. So you shouldn't use the audio tag, but you have to use the audio component directly from the motion. Then we can go back to our timeline and we can take a look at the video track. Inside the video track here, we have the sequence. So the pattern is exactly the same. We are looping through the assets of our video track. And here we have the sequence. The only difference here is that we can have multiple types of assets on the video timeline. So for example, let's say that I have a video. In this case, I am rendering a video with a source and a start from. Uh, let's say that I have a text. In this case, I am rendering an actual text. In this case, the text is just, you know, a span with the style inside of it. So it's nothing complex. It's just plain HTML or in this case, GSX. Then we can have images and then we can have uh, CSS. I don't want to go into the details of each one because the concept is always the same. One thing that is interesting to notice is that we can have styles, but with this render engine, we can have dynamic styles as well. This means that we can have keyframes. Let me give you a brief introduction to keyframes if you don't know what they are. A keyframe is a value of a property in that point of time. So we can have, for example, opacity is zero at the start of the video and then after one second, like 30 frames, we're gonna have opacity one. This gap between one and zero will be usually interpolated by the library itself, in this case, with Remotion, we have functions like interpolate or interpolate colors or interpolate paths. So this was just my brief overview on Remotion, but please take a look at the docs. There are a lot of things that you can create on Remotion. If you want, we have a tiny challenge. So first of all, check out the repo, customize the project. You can choose to customize just the JavaScript file, or you can customize the render engine itself to add more capabilities and then just share your first video. Thanks a lot for watching this video until the end. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will have a lot of fun with Remotion. Thanks a lot and I will see you in the next video.